So tell us about what you, because you have some interesting projects. You must be one of the few people working with a particular species of, it's toads, right? Yes. Yeah. The Adelopus. Adelopus. Okay. Tell us about them. Um, okay. So I have the purple harlequin toads, the Adelopus uh, barbatonii or barbatini. There are two ways to pronounce it. No one really knows because scientific names, right on? <laughs> Um, so I'm working with them. I bred them last year in December and the babies that are actually here at Understory Reptiles or Understory Enterprise, sorry. Um, they are six to seven months out of the water and they're awesome. very tiny still. They're only about I don't like even think I've seen big. those yet. Did you go look at those? Yeah, yet? I they're just right over there. Okay. Yeah. After this, we'll go yeah. look at them. And I brought the adults here too, to show people, you know, how big they do get. Because, do they get quite um, large or? Yeah, they, yeah. they get to a pretty good size, okay, about okay. like this. And they're so like, like they're lanky. Like, yeah. Okay, yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, they're very good climbers. Yeah, well, they they look almost more like a dart frog when you look at them, just yeah. like the the length. Of they the have limbs. very similar care to dart frogs. Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah, uh, and they look sort of like almost fake in a way because like these very like deep purple lines. AI generated. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how did you get into them? Um, I've actually always been pretty interested in them just because of their, um, you know. The way that they look, the purple, yeah. it's going to catch your attention. Totally. And um, I've always really loved the care behind dart frogs. So when I heard that they were very similar to dart frogs, I was like, okay, I'm getting in on this. Yeah, yeah. So when they came um, available here in Canada from Nick Stacy, who was the original breeder. Is that indicator species? On yeah, yes. indicator species. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to him. I follow him on Instagram. Love it's, him. Yeah. Nick, you're the best. God yeah. bless you. So that's where your animals came from originally. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So my pair that I have are Nick Stacy's. Okay. So I got a hold of them actually at Tails and Scales through Nelson. And um, they were confirmed male and female. So I kind of knew what I was into, but um, I didn't know how hard it would be to actually breed them and be successful with the tadpoles. Yeah. It was a journey. So how long have you been attempting? How long have I been attempting? Att attempting to get frogs, you know, on, on land. Like, have you failed a couple of breeding cycles? Or, no. Oh, so how hard could it have been? You did it the first shot. <laughs> well, to be honest, it was the water quality, which was the hardest part. Okay. Um, I was doing uh, water changes every week, about 25 to 50 okay. percent water changes, depending on how dirty it was. Um, I was also doing around two to three water tests a week. Okay. Yes. So. If you have a lot of experience with um, like aquarium, salt water tanks, you'll do fine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. For, for us reptile yeah. people yeah. that just uh, set it and forget it, it's yeah. not going to work out. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of science to it. Yeah, change yeah. it when there's poo in it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Yes. How come my tadpoles are floating? <laughs> <laughs> so do you keep anything else as well? Um, yes. Okay. I keep the um, the waxy monkey tree frogs. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. I have the two species. There's the Phyla medusa subvaki and the Phyla medusa bicolor. Okay. Yes. Cool. No reptiles, just amphibians? One reptile, Tank. He is our leopard tortoise. He is oh, 12 okay. years old. Okay. Cool. Yes. And it's pretty cool. So you must be one of the first in the country that's reproduced them? or the Yes. First? Yeah, that's cool. Yep. You're like the second in North second America. Second in the world. Or in the world. What? You should open with That's that. That's why I dragged her over. Yeah, I know. I didn't realize that. <laughs> you really did. He, he literally took my hand and ran with me. I was like, okay, cool. All right. Wow. Second in the world. Yeah. I, I knew that what Nick was doing was pretty rare, but I didn't realize that he was. He was the first in the world to ever do it successfully. Okay. Yeah. So what were He's the. He's a god. Was it just the water quality challenge? Is that the main thing? It was, but also the feeding of the tadpoles. Okay. Because uh, the tadpoles, they don't feed off the surface of the water because they're so small. So um, they actually really have a hard time breaking the surface tension of the water. That's amazing. Oh, so what you have to do in order to feed them is you need to create a paste and paint it on the rocks so that they can rasp on the rocks. Wow. Oh, that's yes. cool. So making the food was a process, letting it dry to make sure that when you put it in the water and it doesn't just dissolve, that was really difficult. So did Nick tell you, like, this is how you yeah. got to make it? Imagine how many recipes he's gone through with that. Yes. Like, that sounds like a nightmare. Nick was, uh, he was very helpful. So what, what is it? Like, what did, what is the paste made out of? Um, we use the spirulina. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> you don't have to give right all your, into it. You don't have to give all your trade secrets. I'm just curious. Yeah. Uh, so spirulina. Okay. And uh, Missouri tortoise diet. Oh, okay. So you grind that up into an extremely fine, fine powder, almost like calcium powder. Yeah. 
wow. then you add RO to it and you, you make it into a paste and paint the rocks. And how long does that process take? How long does it take the tadpoles to, to jump out? How long does it take for... Like, how long are you f feeding the tadpoles to the point where... Until they morph. Yeah. Like, can will they ever get oh. big enough to feed off the surface? Or are you doing that until they... Until they morphed? emerge. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And so how long is that? It was... So, December, January, February, March. It was about four to five months. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It was uh, a lot of labor. And that's why, you know, the price of the toads reflects on the labor. Yeah. Can you big tell time. us the price? No. Pardon? What's the price? Uh, for the babies right now, I'm selling them for 300 each. Oh, that's not bad. No, yeah. it's really not. Yeah. Um, and I was expecting a thousand. Yeah, well, a thousand for a pair. Okay. So established, already sexed, one thousand yeah. dollars, as it should be. But as babies, they're they're very small. People are very intimidated by the size. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. 300 each. Um, but they're very hardy toads, and a lot of people they're not they don't really know that. Yeah, yeah. They look at something very small and they think, wow, there's no way I can keep that alive. They're but very hardy. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. And they're, you know, they're just so unique. They're bizarre looking. Gorgeous. Yeah. Like it's, it, it's, it's worth the journey, I think. Where are they know? native to? Uh, for the French Guiana. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yes. The, yeah. it, it's, it reminds me, I did an episode with folks who are doing like captive hermit crab. Um, breeding and so the people listening will, will be familiar with this episode and it's like one more level on top of that like doing oh. crazy like 100% water changes but the, the babies are like microscopic and you're taking oh, them yeah. out one at a time to do the, really? to feed the it's, it's insane like I couldn't even believe what I was hearing but that's literally almost like the same uh, labor intensity they yeah. were microscopic yeah when they emerge from the water they're tiny they're smaller than your pinky nail and then what are you feeding the froglets once they once they hop up? Springtails. Oh, springtails. Okay. So Damn. baby springtails to begin, and then adult springtails as they get more established. Some of them are starting Ridiculous. to eat the melanogaster fruit flies. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I have about 180 springtail cultures at home. With different sizes? Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's incredible. crazy. Yes. Yeah. Have you ever tried doing... Um, I'm sorry, I'm going on a tangent now. No, please. Um, I, I was really doing a lot of experimentation when I was doing a lot of frog stuff where I was doing um, like calcium clays, making my own calcium yes, clays yes. and, and kind of trying to up um, the nutrition of, of yep. the springtails. I've done that a few times with the calcium clay. Um, I was kind of hit and miss with it. Yes. I had really inconsistent, but then like Josh's, is it Josh's frogs? Yeah. He has a really good thing. Ed. Tails and scales, Nelson. He uh, yeah, he has got the clay. clay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Cause I think understory was doing they, it. They, for at least for a while they were and i was blown away at the how long yeah it, like yeah. It, it was it, it lasted forever but uh but yeah because that would be a cool way of kind of making sure the calcium is good and, and all absolutely that. yeah i actually offer the calcium clay in the uh, vivarium with the toadlets oh, okay yeah yeah and yeah. they always use it and really they sit yeah, on it they always yeah. sit in it oh that's cool yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fascinating. So moving forward, you're just going to continue focusing on this species and growing the captive population here? As of right now, I'm focusing on these species. My next thing will be the Phylomedusa salvagi. Okay. So um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Carlos. He is, he's, let me show you. <laughs> Let's see Carlos. <laughs> Carlos I want to say yes, but I'm not sure. Carlos yeah, so. is very, very special to me. He is actually, um, this species is what really got me into frogs. Okay. Oh, yeah. yes. Here, yes, can you hold that up to the camera so folks yeah. can see? Even Greg, I don't you might. You guys can see, yeah. yeah. Okay. There we go. <laughs> you can see that. Can you can you plug your Instagram quick? The the handle. Um, it's Nat Attacks. Nat. So N A T T A T T A C K S S. Okay, so if folks want to see that picture, they can go there. <laughs> so Carlos, similar to Mississippi. Yeah, Mississippi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very similar to Mississippi. Yeah, yeah. So I'm working on getting some females for Carlos. So that will probably be within the next two years. That will be a project. Cool. Yeah. That'll cool. be a Canada first as well, if it's successful. That's amazing. You're incredible. Well, that was awesome. I'm, I'm glad that Greg uh, yanked you over here because uh, yeah, I, I wanted too. to talk to you anyway. So we'll, <laughs> we'll, Thank you, Greg. We'll come look at your frogs later. And for anyone watching, they can go to your Instagram page to see the frogs and or, or the, the, the toads, I should say. Yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, so thank you so it's, much. It's uh, Nat's attacks. No, no, no S. Nat attacks. Nat attacks. Nat attacks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. All right, you Perfect. guys. Yeah, we'll come Great. visit you in a little bit. Okay. Okay. Thank Take you. Bye bye. Yeah, that's that's good to see you. Yeah. yeah, that was good. That was good.
Hey there, thank you very much for watching that clip from the Canadian Reptile Breeders Expo live stream. If you want to watch more clips, you can do that here. Or if you want to watch one of the full unedited episodes, you can do that right there.